All right, let's go ahead and sit down and we'll pray and ask God to bless this time, the reading of His Word. Um, and then we'll, we'll begin, we'll dive in. Father, we love You because You first loved us. Lord, it's all about You. It's not about us, it's about You. It's about You sending Jesus. And, and, and Father, I pray that right now if there are hearts and minds in this place that are wondering what this is all about or if they're just kind of sitting there just trying to take it in, Lord, I just pray that you speak to them by the power of your Holy Spirit. Because, Father, the most life-giving relationship we can ever have in this world is with you. And so, Father, we just pray that you bless this word. Whatever you want to say through me today, Father, I just absolutely give you permission it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Well, I had this sermon prepared and it was uh, the servant's heart, on a servant's heart. And then the Lord just kind of began speaking to me this morning. And I've got something, I don't even have it prepared. So I have no idea what I'm fixing to say, okay? But after this weekend, I was challenged by letting the Holy Spirit allow Himself to work freely among us and be a part of what, what He's doing in this community. And the Lord led me to Ezekiel 36 and 37. Now, most of you, some of you in here know exactly what that passage is. It's the Valley of the Dry Bones. And uh, it, I believe there's a word in here, and I believe that God is going to give me that word today um, just because... I am trying my best to be obedient to Him, okay? So that's why I'm here, and I, I have no idea what I'm going to say. But I promise you, it's not going to last two hours. You know, sometimes when preachers say, I don't have any idea what I'm going to say today, it's like, oh, great, we're going to be here till 2.30. But that's not going to happen today, okay? I promise. People are getting baptized today in the name of Jesus Christ. Their families are here today. We've got dads that are baptizing their sons today. And yesterday in the, in the meeting, I was sitting here and we were praying and, and Brother Ken Malone was praying over the church and the community. And, and I just sat back and I said, God, why in the world do you have me as the pastor of this place? That's really, that was my, I mean, being really honest with you. Why in the world did you choose me? But nevertheless, you did and I trust you. Okay, And so there's a level of trust. And Christy and I were talking uh, this morning about how we, the Lord sometimes brings us out, quite possibly a lot of the times God brings us out of our comfort zones. And then that's where He begins to teach us about who He really is. You see, as long as we're inside of our comfort zones... We, everything's familiar to us, right? We get it. We understand it. Even inside of our walk with Christ, it's, we, that can become a comfort zone. We, we put that in a little box and we say, okay, this is my relationship with God. And, and then all of a sudden that becomes comfortable to us. And then we stop. We, keep, we stop moving forward from what God wants to do in a church or in a community, in a life. And we get comfortable with it. Well, I'm here to tell you today as living proof, I am so uncomfortable right now. But I am trusting God because God's going to do something. Okay, let me read these passages to you. And this is Ezekiel who had a vision about the, the nation of Israel. Okay, and he says this, The Lord took hold of me and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones that covered the valley floor. Now I want you to get a picture of that. As I was reading that this morning, I got a picture of a valley. And that valley was covered with bones. Okay? In other words, you couldn't see the ground. It was just bones. You've probably seen movies or, or something like that where you would see just the wreckage of, of a place after warfare or whatever. Just look at it something like that. Just after warfare and this valley full of bones. And they were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become living people again? He's asking a question. 
He says, can these bones become alive again? Here they are, scattered out across this valley. Can they become alive? And this is what Ezekiel says back to the Lord in this vision. O sovereign Lord. He recognizes who He is. Sovereign Lord. The one that knows everything about everything. The one that is on His throne on this day. He's saying, Lord, you alone know the answer to that. Only you know the answer to that, Father. I would love to stand up and be able to say, yes, they will. Wouldn't that be amazing to stand up and say, yes, Father, they will. The bones will come to life again. But he recognized the power and the authority of God and recognized himself compared to who God was. And then he says, only you can answer that question. Only you, Father. And then he goes on to say, Then he said to me, Speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, Are you ready for the prophetic message that he's about to say? He says, Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. Listen to the word of the Lord. Are you listening today to the word of the Lord? Listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. God did not say to Ezekiel, a church program is going to put breath into you and make you alive again. God did not say a gift bag for our new visitors is going to put breath into you and make you live again. An awesome, really cool setup, stage setup, which I like our new stage, by the way, I like it. But that is not going to put breath into you and make you live again. What God is saying is, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. Do you receive that today? I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you. And he goes on to say, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am Lord. When you come to life, then you will know that I am Lord. Because it's all about Him. It's not about who stands up here on a Sunday morning and preaches the Word of God. It's about God. And here's what we have to understand. Let us not seek revival for revival's sake. Let us seek revival. Let us seek the face of God and then revival will come. That's what it's about. It's seeking the face of God and then letting revival come. Because we're so in tune with God, we're so hungry for God, we want His presence manifested in our lives and in our community and in our church that revival comes because what does God say? He says, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I am going to. So we cannot pull our focus off of God to revival. Okay? Our focus has to stay on the face of God. And the face of God will bring revival. That is a word. That's a good word right there. That's real good. <laughs> but let me say this. I'm going to back up a little bit. Because here's what Ezekiel's vision is saying here. He's promising two things. A nation restored and new life. He's promising a nation restored and new life inside of this, this vision. But, but first, we've got to be willing to accept what God says in Ezekiel 36. And I want to back up just a few verses and I want to show you what God is saying in Ezekiel 36. And I really want you to hear this. I really am praying and have prayed all morning that God would speak to you through this verse right here. When I cleanse you, this is verse 33, when I cleanse you from your sins. 
He doesn't say if I cleanse you. He's got full authority to cleanse you from your sins. Okay? Everything you've done in the past, everything you've done right now, today, and everything in the future has been wiped away by the authority of the blood of Jesus Christ. You have no guilt, no shame. You don't have to be guilty. You don't have to walk around in condemnation anymore. You are completely free if you have chosen to accept Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross for you. And then he goes on and he says, When I cleanse you from your sins, I, again, him speaking, will repopulate your cities and the ruins will be rebuilt. The fields that used to lie empty and desolate in plain view of everyone will again be farmed. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that a beautiful passage that God is saying, I will, when, when I cleanse you from your sins, your responsibility is that, of that is to accept the invitation. It's to say, Jesus, I recognize that I have not put you Lord of my life. And today I declare that in my life. I'm, I make you Lord of my life. Take away all the things that I've done. My rebellious nature, my sinful acts, all the things that I know deep down in the core of who I am were, were against you. Take them away. And when you do that, his response is this, when I cleanse you from your sins. Not if. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. I will repopulate your cities and the ruins will be rebuilt. The fields that used to lie empty and desolate in plain view of everyone will again be farmed. Well, now the Lord after that, when I read that, sent me straight over to John chapter 4. And he says, you know the saying. This is Jesus talking. Chapter 4, verse 35. Four months between planting and harvest. He's saying there's four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. The harvesters are paid good wages and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. Joy, what joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike. Let me tell you something. The people that are coming down that have been baptized over the last two weeks and again today, what is happening in their life is a rebirthing. It is a regeneration of, of the old man dying to self and the new man coming alive in Jesus Christ. And I promise you that, that, that God wants every person in this room to be in that situation, to find themselves in that situation in life. And he's saying the, the harvest is ready. It's ripe. It's ripe. Just wake up and look. Wake up and look for it. But he goes on to say this. I spoke this message, this is Ezekiel talking, I spoke this message just as he told me. And as suddenly as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones, then skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Now, we've been talking about the breath of God over the last few weeks. The breath of God breathed, when we talked about in Timothy, it, it, it's inspired. The, God's Word is God breathed. In other words, it's inspired. And it's the same breath that breathed into the man of life at the beginning of time for mankind. And it breathed life into man. And here we are again finding this breath that's saying, suddenly when I spoke this message... All the things came together, but it was lacking one thing. It was lacking the breath of God. The fresh breath of God into this body. And then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the winds son of man speak a prophetic message and say this is what the sovereign lord says come o breath from the four winds breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again breathe father into these dead bodies so that they may live again let me ask you a question today are you alive or are you dead it is that simple 
Are you alive or are you dead? Because if you feel like you are dead today, and I'm talking about spiritually dead, on the inside, God is saying, I will breathe my life into you and make you live again like nothing you've ever seen before. That's what He's saying. That is exactly what God is saying. Because there are people here, include, listen to me, including myself, that are spiritually dead or spiritually apathetic or spiritually indifferent. Whatever's going on, the enemy is trying to pull at us and make us dead spirits, keep us dead, keep us in the grave, keeping us, keeping us down, keeping us discouraged. And I'm telling you, when spiritual warfare attacks you, there is discouragement, there is depression, there is fear, there's anxiety, there's anger, there's all of these things. And God is saying to you, no, 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 no. I want to take my breath and pour it into you so that you will live again. How many of you today want to live again? I want to live again. I want to live again. I'm tired of being spiritually apathetic. I'm tired of being spiritually lethargic. I'm tired of being spiritually asleep. And I am confessing to you as my church body that there are days that go on, that go by and by in my heart and in my life and I just don't care. I really don't. And those are the days that I'm dead inside. And I know that God has me. I know that I'm saved. I know that, that, that my Redeemer lives. I know that it is finished, the finished work of the cross. I get that. But there are some things in life that just keep hammering on us and hammering on us and hammering on us until we just go, I give up. I don't care anymore. You might find yourself there today. Let me tell you something. God is one breath away from you living again. You have to receive that, though. You have to open up your heart and your mind <laughs> and receive it. And allow God to begin breathing His holy work and His holy life and His holy presence back into you. Because when you do, you will become alive again. And this weekend, it encouraged me. It, it, it did something inside of me to say, you know what? Far too long, I've just been going through the motions. I'm done. I'm done going through the motions. I want God's breath to breathe into me and breathe life into me so powerfully that I live again and that God's glory is manifested everywhere I walk. I don't care where I walk. I want God's light to just shine everywhere. Because that's what it's about. It's about affecting other people. I was talking with Ramon this week. He came by my office and we were talking. To, and he said, you know, my pastor back in Puerto Rico always says, let us be transformed so that we can go out and transform others. What a powerful word that is. As we become more and more alive in Christ, the more and more people we affect for Christ. We don't have to take the Bible and beat it over their heads we just live out our life and they recognize that there's something different there's something alive in them there's something going on that 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 I don't have that I want and that's what God is doing in our lives but he says speak a prophetic message to the winds son of man speak a prophetic message and say this is what the sovereign lord says come O breath from the four winds breathe into these dead bodies so that they may live again so i spoke the message as he commanded me that is what got me today i had my notes already and it was all good and i mean it was on a servant's heart and i had a little skit prepared it was good stuff but then god says to me Speak the message that I command you to speak. And when I do that, that is when, when things start to happen. That is when revival breaks out. Is when God says, speak the prophetic message that I have commanded you to say. And then guess what happens? Breath came in to their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet a great army. These men down here, 
That is a great army. This church right here is a great army. I spoke the message as He commanded me. And breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. And there's one other thing that I want to point out, and then we're going to jump into our baptisms. He said to me, Son of man, these bones represent a nation. They are saying we have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. And I know in a crowd this size today, you feel exactly like that. You feel like all hope is gone. That just life's been sucked out of you and you're just going through the routines, you're going through the motions, you wake up every day, six days a week, and you, you get in your car and you drive to work and you, you do your job and then you come home and it's like this robotic life. I don't even know what else to call it. But you just, the alarm clock goes off, you get up, you go to work, you come home, you eat dinner, you watch TV, you go to sleep and you just, that's, that's life. It's just what it is. And God's calling you to something so much deeper than that. He's calling you into a relationship with Him where, yeah, I'm not saying just throw your responsibilities to the side. We all got to work, right? I mean, we got to eat. But the truth is, spiritually, He's calling you to something so much deeper than just going through the motions of a physical, fleshly life. He wants to bring life into you so that you can bring life into other people. And I'm telling you, there's no greater purpose in life than bringing other people to the knowledge and the realization of Jesus Christ in their life and what He wants to do for them. And what happens is you get re-energized, you get refocused, you get repurposed. And you say, okay, all right, I've got this, this life inside of me because I've chosen to allow God to breathe His life deep down into me and it has awakened my soul and now I have purpose. Now I have a reason to get up in the morning. Now I have a reason to fight. I have a reason because there are other people in my life that need to know who Jesus Christ is and I want to share that with them. There are people in my life that are sick. Physically healthy and physically sick. And I need to pray over them. I need to pray for them. I need to pray over them. I need the power of Christ in this situation in my home. There are people in your life that are absolutely ruining your life in a relationship. You need the power of Christ in that relationship. It's a repurposed relationship. You need the power, that breath of Almighty God breathing into the dry bones of your life where you think that all hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore prophesy to them and say, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I will open your graves of exile and I will cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land. When this happens, my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home. That's powerful. That is powerful. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and you will return home. I will bring you back to the land. And when this happens, you will know that I am the Lord. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken. And I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. How many of us today need a word from the Lord? Oh, we all do. We need God to grab a hold of our hearts and our minds and, and really speak to us speak to us and breathe that life back into us and we have to let him do it if we sit there resistant and say no to God then God is going to back off and we'll miss it let's not miss it church 
let's understand what God is saying to us grab a hold of what he's saying to us in Ezekiel 37 and march forward as this great army in truth and light and do what God has commanded us to do and to lay our agendas down I'm praying through that one. Because <laughs> there's flesh and then there's spirit. And... But it's the truth. I, I, I just, I love what, what he says. And I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask that God res, uh, just put this in our hearts and our minds today. I don't believe he's got anything else for me to say. But my question is this, where are you? Are you alive or are you dead? Because you are one breath away from the power in the, of God of becoming alive. If you will receive it today. Just receive it. It's a free gift to you. It's already been paid for. You just got to, you have to receive it. Let me pray. Father, I just thank you for this message. And I thank you for your Holy Spirit. And I thank you for your son, Jesus. And I pray, Father, that, that we would understand what it means to truly be alive. To truly get it. To truly take hold of this message of the valley of the dry bones, Father, and allow you to breathe life into us. And, and allow us to come up and, and be everything you've created us to be, Lord. Help us to live with reckless abandonment of who you've called us to be. I do pray for revival, Father, but not for revival's sake. I pray that we seek your face and that revival will fall because we are so enamored with you. Not what you can do, but we're just enamored with you. And that you would have your way. Father, thank you again for these that are being baptized. Pray that you would walk with them, help us as their church family to, to guide them and help them and teach them. Uh, Father, we love you and thank you for loving us. In Christ's name.